So let's put this thing back together. I'm going to take some Loctite 515 here and we're going to have a relatively clean and dry surface. I'm going to put some of this in here where the bearings sit, where the, rather the bearing seals sit, both sides, just because I want the seals to seal. Now, actually, odds are, because the seals are rubber, it'll probably seal. But, pull a little extra. Why not? I'm going to put some around the edges, too, where the plate is going to sit. Now, this is anaerobic sealer, so it's not going to seal unless there's zero oxygen. So it will stay goopy until everything is tight. Got the crank, got the seals. Now, this was already installed in the saw. I installed it, so I'm not that worried about these being good or bad, but I don't really, I'm not so sure cranks go back that often, but for the most part, these seals, let's see, sorry, these seals, uh, which are over the bearings, which are basically impossible to separate, those do go bad. So, if you're doing a rebuild, odds are you're just going to change out the bearings and the seals, because if you get an air leak, if you happen to get an air leak, then you can ruin the saw if one of these seals goes, which is not exactly optimal. So, might as well put new seals in. Again, this was just rebuilt not too terribly long ago, so I'm not that worried. We're going to make sure that is home there. That's good. Now, the bearing cap here, base plate adapter, whatever you want to call it, um, I need to clean this up just a tad. And we're going to put a little bit of goop on here and put that home too. So I've got the bearing cap cleaned up. Random orbital sander, just hit it with a light coat, uh, a light touch of sanding there light coat of 515 on here and essentially you're going to do all surfaces here <sighs> be really nice is to have an ultrasonic cleaner just stick this in the ultrasonic for two minutes and that would be super clean, but work with what you got. I don't got that. I got that at the office, but not here. Okay, so the bearing cap here is lightly coated with 515. <coughs> the whole thing. The part that we notched out here goes towards the intake side. Now, this is often where you do something stupid and forget something. Here's what you can forget if you're not paying attention. It's this brass piece right here. So if you have the whole saw dismantled and you're putting it back together, you can start with, just like I did, the crank, the seals, and the bearing cap. But don't forget this brass piece because uh, that's the ground. At least I think that's the ground. So now we're going to seal up the bearing cap from the other side with the bearing cap bolts and these need some Loctite as well, blue Loctite. Four bolts on the bottom. Now I'm actually kind of assuming that you removed everything here, uh, so this is how I will start the rebuild. I, didn't, I did not remove everything like the oil. 
the oil pump, the dog, the oil filter, the ignition coil, so none, none of that is uh, removed, but if you were doing a complete disassembly, then I can go over that here. And then there. Right, this is where I would start to put the saw back together anyway. I use a T-handle on these. Evenly put them down. It would actually be difficult to strip these out, I think. Not that you can't do it, but... That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. So now that's home. You're gonna, before you start this, you're actually gonna wanna let that sit for 24 hours. But we'll keep reassembling. So at this point, you can put the ignition coil on, uh, which is just two uh, four millimeter Allens, and make sure the wires are in there too. Uh, you can also uh, kind of skip it around a bit, but you can put the oil pump back on. Again, it should be a four millimeter Allen, and the chain tensioner there too. Uh, of course, the dog. So none of that really matters what order you do it in. Um, be careful about this screw holding the oil pump on. It's uh, a little on the fragile side. You can strip it out pretty easy. So nice and nice. It does not need to be really tight. So let's keep working on the piston cylinder here. I think we're going to put the I think we need to put the carb on, actually. So let's put the carb on, and uh, actually on the cylinder. We'll seat the whole that whole piece as one unit. So this next part is by far probably the most ridiculously annoying part of the whole project. So this metal clamp here. And this, to get into focus here, sorry. The metal clamp and this uh, baffle piece go together. And you actually need, uh, this metal clamp is part of a service bulletin because these, uh, the thing that kills 350s is a plastic clamp that. Uh, dies over time. Anyway, I got some um, and, and basically create an air leak. I got some 515 on here and I'm going to put this down. The impulse hole has got to be open there. The whole thing really has got to be seated. You got to seat the whole thing proper. And then comes the pain in the neck part which is getting this clamp together. So get the holder on, get it ready to go. Make sure you got enough sealant around here, but not in the impulse hole. Otherwise you'll end up no impulse. No impulse means no fuel, no fuel means no go. And that's bad. Make sure it's seated, and then hit it with alignment pliers. You gotta bring these two together. I think Lyman's pliers work the best for this. And it's over. Done. It's grabbed. So that's that. That's how that should look. Should be grabbed like that. Click with the lineman's pliers. It should go. If it doesn't, 
you may actually have to bevel the leading edge of this there. So you may actually have to bevel the leading edge of this and I'm searching for a pointer. So as this part slips over, um, you may need to grind on the leading edge, not the edge that grabs. You don't want to grind on that, but on the leading edge to let this slip over. And make sure this is down here, uh, that the whole thing is cinched together this way properly. So once that's in, now you've got that, now you're really good to go. I like to put grease on nearly everything as I'm reassembling the saw. Talked to a mechanic once, hobby guy. He says everything goes on the car with grease or Loctite, depending on what you're doing. I like the way he said that. I thought that was quite relevant or pertinent. So it's the same way I do cars, grease or Loctite. So I'm going to cinch these bolts down here. Easy. So now the carb assembly here is on. And I'm going to check it with my with my 4 millimeter Allen. That's good. Once the boot isn't ripped. Looks good to me. That assembly is good and ready to go. All right. Before we put this down, now you can actually put the muffler on here too, and since the whole thing down at the same time, I'm not going to do that. We'll put the muffler on later. But what we got to do now is the piston. Okay. So the piston. Got a ring here. We're going to put some two cycle oil. I've used grease, I've used two cycle, use three in one. Makes more sense to use two cycle oil because that's what's going to lube everything anyway. So the ring goes in with uh, this part down, and there's a pin here. And basically, if you're doing this, it's pretty obvious how this goes in. And some of them are actually stiffer than others. But that slips on over, a little bit of lube. A little bit of two-cycle over the whole thing. Uh, sir clips. The other bugger on this friggin' saw. These circlips are for sure a pain. Like a guarantee. So I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do it on the clutch side first and you'll see why in a minute. Dive it in. I've actually practiced this and, and gotten reasonably good at it, but and turn it. And work it gently in. If you're using a lot of force, you're doing it wrong and make sure it spins. It's got to spin, otherwise it'll fall out later. Okay. Wrist pin. And bearing. Don't forget this little bearing. Oh. 
forget this needle bearing problems. Needle bearing goes in here. Piston, there's always a arrow. The arrow is towards the exhaust side. Find where this goes. Wrist pin is in, and now comes the reason that I did the clutch side first, and the answer is for the for the circlips, it's just easier to get the circlip on the passenger side here. Actually, technically, maybe the driver's side, whatever. So the flywheel side, it's easier to put the circlip on later than it is on the clutch side. And I like to hold my finger, my thumbnail there, so it won't let the circlip back out and twist it around. And it just goes in. I know. I've done this quite a few times, and some of you guys out there are struggling with it, and that's okay. Practice, and you can get it. They're a pain. No question. All right, so I've got the bearing in there. I haven't forgotten anything yet. One thing we can easily forget is this stupid gasket right here. So, put this gasket on. I'm going to coat this with Loctite. Again, the 515 here. Very light coat on the bearing cap. Very, very light coat. Just a nudge on here. If we've machined it, it should be pretty flat. So you don't need lots of seal to mess up your airflow on the inside. Certainly not on the impulse line there. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat the gasket. Both sides. The gasket is coated. This notch goes towards the intake side. Again, because that's for the impulse line. Line up the holes. Little bit of Loctite here on the. Now, at this point, you're going to set this down. And you're going to make sure both of those silly circlips are installed. They got to be installed. You forget. Oh, golly. <clears throat> While I'm here, I'm going to put some blue Loctite on the threads of the cylinder head bolts. That way, I don't have to. Do the bolts individually. Don't lose your caps to your Loctite. So now I'm going to put this down. Here we go. Now, on another video, I showed you how to use a uh, zip tie for a spring compressor, which works brilliantly, by the way. Sometimes you can just get it with your fingers. here, make sure that's aligned. I did not remove enough from this partition wall. Shucks. Okay. So now I've ground down the partition a little bit more. 
see if this goes on. it. That's good. <sighs> I can already tell that there's an impulse because I see some fluid on the, the top of the pump here in the carb. So that's fine. Now we need to put the cylinder head bolts down. Now with these you might find that you need to shorten them. The issue is if you don't shorten them a little bit, then they tend to bottom out and then the, the cylinder head does not sit all the way uh, down solidly and it will rattle and you'll get an air leak and you'll destroy the piston and the cylinder. So, I shorten these just a touch and then everything is all better. Okay, cylinder head bolts are going on. Again, you don't cinch them all the way down tight. One little trick that I use is I actually dip the head of the Allen in grease. And it grips the bolt better and I can bring it all the way down. Holding. And that's good enough for all of them. Okay, so this is set to really light torque, but now I'm going to tighten this down with a proper T handle. And crosswise is good. I do them a little bit at a time. Almost felt stripped there. It's not. don't need to be ultimately tight. That's it. Just in with Loctite. So <clears throat> the base gasket's in and the circlips are on. Uh, there's sealant on the base gasket. There's sealant on the uh, bearing cap, riser plate, base adapter, whatever you want to call it. Let's do the flywheel next. Why not? Uh, no lube on the flywheel. Made that mistake. And apparently these don't need a timing advance. So I'm going to leave the flywheel stock. What I am going to do is put blue Loctite on here. The nut that goes on here is fairly specialized. You need a torque wrench to put this on. Again, I've made the mistake of not using the torque wrench, and uh, it's been bad. We'll leave it at that. The uh, the flywheel slips, and when the flywheel slips, you get upset because then you can't start it. And you can't figure out why. It won't start. So this is actually 13 foot-pounds, so, so the torque here is quite specific. Um, I usually use a screwdriver in here, but you can actually use a piston stop as well. So let's do that. It's a little less invasive. I'm going to use my handy-dandy nylon cord here. Put it in the cylinder head, get 
that to stop. That's 13 foot pounds, that's good. Back it off a tad, good. Feels nice. Let's put in this guy, a little bit of grease. It's one of the silly parts that you tend to forget. Remember how I said the uh, the metal clamp gets in the way? Let's see if you can see it. Here, if it's not in the proper orientation, it'll actually hit the chassis. So make sure it's in what is that? Ten o'clock position. Ten, maybe eleven o'clock is okay. Eleven is difficult to get to because you're not going to be able to get alignment pliers there. Ten is basically ideal. So if you put the, start, the shroud and the starter cover on, you're going to miss that there are uh, positioning bolts down here that you're going to need to get to and it's going to be a pain later. So don't put the starter cover on yet. But also don't knock this over because you got this piece here and you can break that off. So be careful about that. Let's attach the carb. So you need a flat plate screwdriver to put this down. So we're going to slide that into the positioner. You really need some type of a shoehorn for this, but flat blade works fine. Again, if I'm redoing the saw completely, then I literally just take the whole thing out and hose it off and all that stuff. Grease on the anti-vibe bolts. One thing that I look for when I want to see if a saw is worn or not, the chain catcher. This little piece goes down here on the, the front anti-vibe uh, spring. And you got to get this spring kind of lined up and then you can cinch it down. It doesn't need to be super I look at the chain catcher. If the chain catcher is all worn, that's a part that you got to replace. That's like nine bucks right there. So, uh, not my not my favorite thing to. Uh, it's easy to replace, but it's really not my favorite thing to uh, have to spend money like that. So, when you're looking for a saw, somebody says it's it's done over. Check that. Also check the gas caps and the oil caps, make sure they're fresh looking too, because it's silly to have a saw that isn't fresh. My very humble opinion, of course. Uh, the bolts for the um, more anti-vibe, so I put the rubber in first. Put this bolt down. Light on these, you do not want to over torque these. Again, these all get greased, these all have been greased actually because I put this together earlier this year or earlier last year 2014. It's just 2015 now. Put a little more grease on here just in case. Now you can actually go and put the shroud and the, um, the starter cover on. You really need to run the wires pretty much where 
uh, stock says, and the reason is because, boy, they can get tangled up in a flywheel, and you can imagine how bad that would be. Things bounce around and move around, and you really don't want things tangled up in a flywheel. The uh, 385 XP that I just did, did have that. Something got caught. After the saw was dropped, of course, but at least that's what I can, from what I can see, that's probably what happened. Crowd goes on, run the wires across, up and through, and pull them through with a pointy nose. Long. This comes down here. I like to have the switch in the on position. When I put the that spade connector back in there, just easier. Back to off. So those are in there. They're fine. Now we can put. So that's how you run that, and you gotta. Put the spark plug wire back too. So now we can put the cover on here. And the cover's got to be aligned proper. Like, if it isn't aligned, if it doesn't go easy, something's wrong. So, as this goes back, I typically like to check that because it's got to align properly. And you don't want to try putting plastic down and then have something twist and then you break the plastic. Or strip something out. Like I saw. With the clutch and the rim and all that stuff, I I don't actually torque these down tight. Because it will the clutch actually tends to work its way on anyway. First few revs you don't want to let off the gas too fast because otherwise the clutch is going to go spinning across the room. And there are plenty of guys that know exactly what I'm talking about. So uh Stainless cover piece. There's a, usually a tiny, tiny screw to go with it. That's all that you need. The worm gear drive for the oiler. And now we can do the rim drive. First thing we do here is put a little oil on this. That's for the, uh, the needle bearing. Uh, this clutch drum happens to be uh, rim drive, but uh, often they're single piece. This is actually an aftermarket unit, which is functional, but slightly sloppy. And I'm going to see if I can fix this here. So grab on a diagonal and then get your finger in there, press down with your thumb. These worked. If you're saying, how the heck did he do that? Well, uh, I've done it a number of times. Number one and number two, there's another video on how to do this uh, elsewhere on my channel. So, uh, clutch goes on. Like 
that's all that you need for tightness. Throttle linkage is pretty easy. Slide it on back. And some of these, I've actually had to bend some of these. But, by the way, I just know you don't want to touch them. Back, move the throttle itself forward, push that in, push the uh, throttle linkage in towards the carburetor, and then move the spring underneath there. And now you've got that. Uh, while we're here, while we're at it, I've got the fuel line on. Uh, no harm in putting the air filter on here at this point. Pop. Let's see if we can work on the, uh, the exhaust here for a moment.